Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to talk about a sponsor that helps me out every single day, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of a spoken word entertainment, featuring a large array of audiobooks, podcasts, comedy, and much, much more. In the last few months, I've been going back and listening through some of the oldies that I've looked over in the past. I'm currently enjoying Under the Dome by Stephen King, and it's been really great so far. Being able to dive into an audiobook that I find interesting enriches my day-to-day -day immensely. In between recording stories for this channel and just going about my daily routine, I love to turn on an audiobook just to pass the time. No matter what genre you're interested in, Audible has you covered. I found myself jumping around to random titles that I never thought that I would enjoy before, but I ended up loving them. Audible makes it easy to explore new content in just a few quick clicks, and the results are always interesting. New members can always try Audible for 30 days absolutely free. Just visit audible.com slash mrcreeps or text Mr. Creeps to 500-500. Again, that's audible.com slash Mr. Creeps, or texting Mr. Creeps to 500-500. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring today's video. It all started in early 2019, when the first whale had washed up on shore. The happening was not very uncommon. The occasional whale would wash up on shore once in a while. But the whale, or what was left of it, that had washed up in 2019, well, that was different and much, much more disturbing. The whale was huge. A humpback whale. But that was just one of these species that these scientists suggested it could have been. On a sunny evening in the middle of July, I was walking down the shore when I had stumbled upon the whale. It was massive. But do you want to know the most disturbing part? Only the lower half of the whale had washed up on shore. Only the tail and back fins that flimsily hanging onto the gruesome lower half of the body. The entire lower half of the body was scarred and wounded. Only the pale colors of it allowed me to identify the creature as a whale. It looked. It looked as if something took a huge bite out of the whale. For starters, a huge section of it was ripped out. Gigantic scratch marks covered the rotting skin of the whale. After discovering it, I had taken a picture of it and I had called 911. They soon came, covered the body with a tarp, and they sent it to some researchers over in Washington. And oh boy, that was only the beginning. A local fisherman whose name was Travis was on his boat, fishing for tuna offshore. He recalls that while he was reeling in a huge yellowtail tuna fish, he had spotted something moving beneath the surface of the water. At first, he thought that it looked like a shark fin, but the shark fin was black, and it was rigid and bony. And that was when Travis had realized that the shark fin wasn't actually a shark fin. It was a spike. At that same moment, Travis looked down at the water. But all that he saw was darkness. Not darkness as in the water had suddenly turned black. Darkness as if something in the water was blocking the sunlight from entering the water. Something huge, absolutely enormous, was swimming right under Travis's boat. Travis said that the previously thought to be a shark fin immediately disappeared underwater. And after just a few seconds, the shark fin spike reappeared along with hundreds of other spiked fins, all moving in alignment. 
the thing under Travis's boat. It looked to be about 900 meters long. It stretched out into the distance. He couldn't see the head or tail of the creature. The previously thought to be shark fins looked to be attached to whatever was moving underneath his boat. Moving along with the creature beneath the water. After five terrifying minutes, the tail of the creature could be seen from a distance. And it was, based on Travis's account, absolutely terrifying. The tail alone looked to be around a hundred meters long. It was rigid and bony, prehistoric looking and algae covered. Travis stayed on his boat and didn't move until the creature had left. And then he drove back to shore. And the only time he told anyone was when he was extremely drunk at the bar. A few days later, five more mangled and attacked whale washed up on shore. This, however, was not dismissed and taken so easily by the community. The whales had attracted huge crowds. And eventually, the town council was pressured into digging deeper and finding out answers. Eventually, the police and community cleanup arrived at the scene. Due to the enormous size of the whales, they had to be destroyed with explosive devices and chainsaws. Not too pleasant, if you would ask me and the beach was turned completely red for a few weeks. Over a few weeks after that, deep sea fishermen and sailors reported seeing an enormous shape beneath the water, so huge, so massive, that they couldn't even see the end of it. More horribly mangled whales and sometimes even great white sharks kept washing up onto the shore again and again and more people continued to see the enormous and unknown creature far offshore. And as stupid and cliche as it sounds, more and more people wanted answers. And them, being these stupid rednecks that they are, they just wouldn't give up on it. The community pressured the city council to send a submersible down into the ocean to investigate. And after a month's time, when strangely there was no more strange activity. And that's exactly what they did. The city council hired a team who could operate a submersible, and they sent them down in the general direction of where the creature was last seen. Most people had expected the submersible and its crew to discover some giant and undiscovered creature and while they were only half wrong, they did discover a creature. It lay at the bottom of the sea floor, its true enormity being revealed. The crew of the submersible said that the creature looked like a 900 meter long mosasaur, only the creature's skin was plated with black scales covering its entire body. Its tail was exactly how Travis had described it, bony and rigid, fin-like spikes lining the top surface of the tail. But they couldn't completely confirm if the creature was a giant mosasaur because it had no head. Something else had killed the giant creature. Something much, much bigger. I feel like I should say that the bulk of this town's population is made up of saltwater fishermen and recreational hunters. So, both of those activities are a huge factor on the town's economy. Cryptozoology is also a big factor here. This town is where the world likes to dump its weird stuff, aka the town equivalent of Skinwalker Ranch. Lots of weird stuff goes on around here. UFO sightings, unknown creature attacks, demon summoning rituals, unexplained disappearances, you name it all. 
If almost all the population didn't own guns, we would all be dead by now. However, there is one slight aspect that sets this town apart from others. There is an abundance of strange agents who belong to a vague organization. Other than that, it's your run-of-the-mill small town on the shoreline. If I forgot to mention, I'm a marine biologist, and I'll say it now. I'm a marine biologist, and my career is one of the reasons I decided to move into this seaside town. By the name, my name is Roger Rogers. It's a weird name, I know. The job isn't as exciting as I had originally imagined. I didn't always go into submersibles exploring the deep blue sea. My job mainly consisted of staring at some rotten fish for a couple of hours and then writing out some study notes. And since I was a marine biologist, I decided to go look and investigate the matter of the Leviathan. The local government covered up the findings by saying that the submersible team had discovered an extremely rare communal pack of great white sharks, which was a total BS, and that they were the ones responsible for all of the whales washing up. Eventually, I found a guy with a submersible to take me down to the location. So, the plan was, go to the location of the creature, examine it, and assume what beast could have killed the mosasaur-like creature that lay in the murky depths of the inhospitable ocean it once called home. So, on one Friday afternoon, I found myself boarding a three-person submersible, along with my driver, Benjamin. Ben was skinny and short and had curly brown hair and light skin. Adjusting to the cramped space the submersible offered, I sat down and introduced myself to Ben, for I didn't know his name at the time. Ben flipped several switches, pulled a black lever and some other stuff that I couldn't recognize, and then the submersible slowly descended into the blue water the light slowly disappearing as we went deeper. I feel that I should say that the feeling of going underwater, even though the safety of a submarine is amazing, the feeling is mesmerizing. It's as if you've entered a portal to a whole new world, a completely different environment. Dozens of tiny fish darted away from the submersible's porthole, as larger animals like sharks came into view. We ended up going to a location far away from the shore where the body of the Leviathan was located. When the people who hired me told me how big the creature was, I knew it was big, but up close, it was absolutely enormous, even bigger than I would have ever imagined. The rotting leviathan that was once a great beast sat on the bottom, covering a large amount of distance with its body. I nodded. Let's get started. Can you move the submarine at an angle where I can see the sly snack? Already on it. The submersible turned and moved a little to the left, and I could see the stump where the creature's head had once been. It was a clean cut, not much mass. Most of the blood and guts were being swarmed by hungry scavengers and sharks, a true feeding frenzy. From what I could tell, the animal that did this had to have been territorial. Not hungry since not much of the Mosasar-like creature was eaten, only the head. And judging from these circular and line marks on the skin of the Leviathan, the animal that did this had to have had tentacles. That put an immediate thought into my head. Squid. A huge, oversized monster. A squid had to have done this. Of course, this theory was not a very reliable one. But still, it was the best that I could come up with. But something didn't add up. The Leviathan had bite marks engraved into its skin. 
huge and deep bite marks. Squid octopus and any kind of cephalopod had beaks, but they didn't have mouths or teeth. So, what had hooked tentacles and razor-sharp, flesh-ripping teeth? Nothing at least, nothing scientifically. Ben waved his hand in front of my face and grinned. Hey, Roger, you zoned out for a bit. I shook my head. Sorry, I was just thinking. Whatever did this was a territorial, and it took that leviathan out because this was its territory, not because of hunger. And whatever did it had hooked tentacles.